All right, welcome back to another episode of Science with Serbeck. Today we have a lot going on talking about solution and concentration and how we express that particular concentration uh, throughout uh, solution chemistry. So there's quite a few objectives, there's quite a few calculations that go along with this particular section. So uh, the first objective uh, that we have here is calculate the molarity, solution volume, or number of moles of solute given in any two of these quantities. Objective number two, calculate the volume of a more concentrated solution that must be diluted to obtain a given quantity of a more dilute solution. Objective number three, calculate the volume of a solution required to react with a volume of a different solution using molarity and the stoichiometry of the reaction. Objective number four, calculate the amount of substance required to react with a given volume of solution using molarity and the stoichiometry of the reaction. Objective number five, calculate the concentration or mass of solute in a sample from titration data. Objective number six, define mass percentage, parts per million, mole fraction, molarity, and molality and calculate concentrations in any of these concentration units. And objective number seven, convert concentration in one concentration unit into any other uh, unit that is, is required. Also be able to incorporate density into those particular conversions. So as you can see, there's, there's a, quite a number of objectives. Uh, so there's a lot of calculations, a lot of definitions that we'll go over today. Our first definition that we have is molarity. And molarity is defined as the amount of moles of sol solute per liter of solution. Now to make things a little bit easier, molarity has a formula to go with this. That formula is molarity Molarity equals moles, moles of solute divided by liters of the total solution. Now, this right here, we have to be real careful because we use the symbol capital M. So again, we use the symbol capital M to represent molarity. And this whole thing with molarity is known or pronounced as the molar concentration of some solution. All right, so let's apply this to an example here. We wanna calculate the molarity of a solution by dissolving 23.4 grams of sodium sulfide in enough water to make 125 milliliters of solution. So we start out here with our formula for molarity. And instead of writing out molarity, I'm just gonna write M. And we're gonna have moles of our solute divided by liters of solution. So we just go through this just like we would a normal formula here. And we write down all of the things involved in this particular formula. And we plug in what we know and solve for what we don't know. So our molarity, ultimately the question says, hey, what is the molarity? So that's gonna be our big question mark, our big variable that we have to find. And then our moles of solute. Now, nowhere in the problem does it say moles of the particular solute, but it does give us grams of sodium sulfite. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this down as 23.4 grams of sodium sulfite, and I'm going to convert it to moles. Now, to save some time here, I went ahead and I calculated uh, the molar mass of sodium sulfate, and it's 142.04 grams per mole of sodium sulfate, that's that molar mass. So what I do here is I need to cancel my diagonal units. So grams of sodium sulfate is going to go on bottom and I need to convert to moles of sodium sulfate. So moles will go on top. Now, 
142.04 grams is associated with that G for grams. So we put that value here down below and that is for every one mole. So to find out how many moles of solution we have uh, or solute we have, we take 23.4. We divide it by 142.04. And because I had three significant digits with 23.4, I'm gonna round this to three digits here. So I'm gonna round to 0.165. Again, that is 0.165 moles of sodium sulfate. Now we get down here to our liters of solution. Again, we don't have outright liters of solution, but what we do have is milliliters. So I'm gonna write down 125 milliliters because that's what's given of the solution. And we need to convert that to liters. So we take this number and we divide it by a thousand to get to our liters. So as a reminder here, 125 divided by a thousand equals 0.125.125 liters of our solution. So from here, what we do is we just plug everything back into our equation. So our molarity is going to equal 0 0.165 moles of our solute, which is sodium sulfate, divided by our liters of solution, which we just calculated to be 0.125 liters. So what we do to calculate the molarity is we put 0.165 divided by 0.125. We press enter and we get a value of 1.32 molar, or we express that as a big M of sodium sulfate. And that ultimately becomes our answer. Now, we have another example here, another couple example problems with molarity, and it, it gets molarity a little bit different way. So sometimes it's not as straightforward as what we see here. So this second problem says, how many grams of sodium sulfite are required to make 0 0.35 liters of 0 0.500 molar sodium sulfate? So again, we start out here with our formula. And our formula here is going to be big M equals moles of our solute divided by liters of our solution. And we just list out what we know and what we don't know. And so we look here and our molarity, our big M is actually given at 0.500 molar sodium sulfate. So 0 0.500 molar sodium sulfate. Now our moles of solid, we ultimately don't know that. And this is going to be an extension once we find the moles. So we're gonna have to go one step further here and I'll show you that here in a second. Now, what's nice is that our solution is already in liters, so we can literally just write down 0 0.350 liters of our solution. All right, we have two of the three unknowns. We're gonna plug this back into our equation. So we have 0 0.500 big M for molar sodium sulfate equals, equals our moles of solute, which we don't know. And in this case, our moles of solute is gonna be moles of sodium sulfate. Now on bottom, our liters of solution is 0 0.350 liters. So now what we're going to do, we're going to cross multiply. So I always like to draw my, my arrow to remind me to cross multiply. And so in my calculator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0 0.500 times 0 0.350. I get an answer of 0 0.175, and this 
this, I'm gonna make sure I have room here, 0.175 moles of sodium sulfate. Now, it doesn't really help us out because we're trying to measure that, that amount of sodium sulfate uh, and there's no scale that measures moles of a substance. The scales measure in grams. So what we need to do is we need to go from moles here and convert it to grams. And just as a reminder, sodium sulfate from the previous page had a molar mass of 142.04 grams per mole. So we set up our conversion here. We need to cancel out moles of sodium sulfate on bottom and on top we need to get to grams of sodium sulfate. So again, 142.04 grams per mole. That means one mole has 142.04 grams. So I go ahead, I press 0.175 moles times 142.04, I divide by one, and I get a value here of 24.9 and I rounded to three significant digits because that's what I was given originally in this problem. So ultimately, ultimately here, to make this solution, you need to put 24.9 grams of sodium sulfate in a container and fill that up, fill that up to the 0.35 liter mark. Okay, so now, we go a little bit deeper here. Now we have to play with uh, density. So a solution has a density of 0.876 grams per milliliter. And in this solution, it contains 5.0 grams of C7H8 and 225 grams of C6H12. We wanna know what is the molarity of the solution. So again, we start out with our formula. Big M equals moles of solute divided by liters of solution. And we write out what we know and don't know. And we start out here with this. Ultimately it says, hey, what is the molarity of this particular solution. So big M is gonna be our question mark. And then we have moles of solute. Remember from the, the intro lesson here on solutions, the solute is the substance that is present in the lesser amount. So you look at, hey, which one of these two things is smaller? And hey, that five grams of C7H8 is smaller. Now again, that is not that is not moles. So we're gonna have to do a little work here, but to save us some time, to save us some time again, the molar mass of C7H8 is 92.13 grams per mole. So what we do here, we set up the conversion factor and we need to cancel grams of C7H8 on bottom and on top we can get to moles of C7H8. So again 92.13 grams per mole this means we need to have 92.13 grams for every one mole and in our calculator all we need to do is take 5.0 5.0 divided by 92.13 and because we're given two uh, significant digits here, we can just say 0 0.054, 0 0.054 uh, moles of C7H8. Okay, so now we get down to liters of solution. Well, this is kind of our, our, our barrier here, and we need to do some thinking about this. Well, we're given the density of this entire solution. And just as a reminder, this density, D for density, equals M for mass divided by volume. Well, liters is a portion or, or structure of volume. And so we need to think about our density 
and think about how we can, can use density to get to volume because nowhere in the problem does it say anything about strictly volume. So what we need to do here is we're going to write down the density. So 0.876 grams per milliliter. Now this equals the M for mass, but the M for mass is the total mass of the solution. So the total mass of the solution is going to be 225 plus 5 because that is everything involved in that solution. Again, the density is for the entire solution. So just as a reminder, I'm going to put 5.0 plus 200, and I should put the unit here, uh, 5.0 grams plus 225 grams. That is divided by our volume. Now, what we're going to do here, I'm, I'm running out of room, but you would cross multiply. So you have 0.876 times V equals 230. So to get V by itself, you're going to take 230, which is just adding 5 and 225 together. So 230 divided by 0.876. And we get a value here uh, of 262 and some decimals. We can actually round that to 263. And our unit here, because our density was in grams per milliliter, is in milliliters. So now we still have a little work to do because we don't need our density, or excuse me, our volume in milliliters. We need it in liters. So we're going to divide this value by 1,000 to get it into liters. So in our calculators, we're going to put 263 divided by 1,000, and we get a volume of the solution to be 0.263 liters. All right, a lot of work, and we still aren't done because now we have to plug these values back into our molarity formula. So I'm going to squeeze uh, this in right here. So our M, big M, is going to be equal to 0.054 moles of C7H8, all divided by our liters of solution, which we just found out to be 0.263 three liters and we plug that value into our calculators. So we type in 0 0.054 divided by 0.263 and we press enter. Now because we use two significant digits here we can round this to 0 0.21 molar C7H8. So again this is 0 0.21 molar C7H8, and that would become our molarity of this particular solution. All right, so a lot of work, kind of a lot of things we've, we've already done, we've clumped together, it's summarized right here. All right, so now we can move on to a, a new additional concept here associated with solution concentration, and it's a very, very similar sounding word or uh, solution concentration uh, term, and it is known as molality. Now, molality is defined as the amount of moles of solute per kilogram of solution. And that last term should be solvent. I think I said solution, and that should be solvent. Now, to help us out here, uh, to make this a little bit easier, there is a formula. So the formula here, the molality of a solution is equal to moles, moles of your solute divided by your kilograms, your kilograms of solvent. So that makes things a little bit easier. And uh, one thing to recognize here, molality, it sounds very similar but it uses the symbol little m, or it's represented by little m. Now, we read molality as molal concentration. Now, the reason that we have molality versus molarity is that molality, because we have moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent, there is no temperature 
and there's no density dependencies. So what that means here is that if we fluctuate either the temperature or uh, the density here, it's not going to affect it. And more appropriately here, as we increase or decrease the temperature, what happens is that the volume of a solution will either increase or decrease. And this right here, because we use kilograms of solvent, that does not get affected by temperature. All right, so uh, anyways, we go down here to our example. Uh, it says a solution is made by dissolving 4.35 grams of glucose in 25.0 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the molality of the solution if the water has a density of uh, 1.00 grams per milliliter? So again, we write down the formula. So little m equals moles of solute divided by kilograms kilograms of solvent. We write down what we know and don't know. So we have each of our items listed here and we go through this particular process. So ultimately it says, hey, what is the molality of this particular solution? So that's going to be our big question mark. And then moles of our solute. Well, we ha don't have moles, but we have grams written down of glu glucose. So we have 4.35 grams of C6H12O6. And now, to save some time here, I already calculated the molar mass of glucose to be 180.16 grams per mole. So we set up our conversion factor here. We have grams of glucose on bottom, and on top we have moles of glucose, and we turn to our molar mass. Well, there's 180.16 grams, 180.16 grams per one mole. What we do to find the number of moles of C6H12 is we take 4.35 divided by 180.16, we press enter. And since we had three significant digits, I'm gonna round this to 0 0.0241 moles of glucose. So 0 0.0241 moles of our uh, glucose. Now down here, it doesn't specifically give kilograms of solution. But again, we have density, and I know it said, hey, independent of density, but we are trying to find the amount in kilograms of our solvent. So what we do again is, just as a reminder, density, density equals mass divided by volume. So if we have this, our uh, density to be 1.00 gram per milliliter, we don't know the mass because if we knew, we would just put that down there. Divided by our amount and volume of our solvent, which is 25 milliliters. Well, this is one times 25. So ultimately here, our mass, our mass becomes 25.0 grams of H2O. We do not need it in grams of H2O, we need it in kilograms. So we divide this number by 1,000. And what we do in our calculators here is we take 25.0 divided by 1,000 and we get 0 0.025. So that is 0 0.025 kilograms of H2O, our solvent. So to find our molality, we just plug these numbers back in. So we had 0 0.0241 moles of C6H12O6, all divided by our mass in kilograms of the solvent, which is 0 0.025 kilograms of that H2O.
So ultimately what we need to do here is we need to take 0.0241 divided by 0.025 and our molality of this particular solution becomes 0 0.964. So again, the molality of the solution becomes 0 0.964 little m of our glucose here. Okay, again, a lot of things happening here, a lot of ways to get to our answer. To help us out, we will go over an additional problem that solves for our molality just a, a little bit differently. So we'll transition here to that next example problem of molality. And ultimately here it says, hey, what is the molality of an aqueous solution that contains 36% hydrochloric acid or HCl by mass. Well, again, we're trying to find molality. So the first thing that we need to do is write down that formula for our molality. That is moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. So we write out what we know and what we don't know and then we plug that back into our equation. Okay, so uh, we get to this, 36% HCl by mass. So we have to do some thinking about percent by mass. Uh, let's say here this. If we have 36% of a 100 gram sample, we would have 36 grams. So let's, let's write this down here. If we assume that the total mass of the solution is equal to 100 grams, because that makes percent a lot easier. And we have 36% or 36 of those grams be HCl, we can do some working here. So again, 36% HCl, because we have a 100 gram sample, we can assume that we have a 36 grams of HCl. Again, all because percentage, the way percentage works. Now, we still need to find just the mass of the solvent, and the way that we can do that is just take 100 minus 36. Now, uh, you could probably do this in the head, but just to confirm ourselves here, we have 100 minus 36, which equals 64. Well, this is meaning that 64 of those 100 grams is H2O, which is our solvent. So let's go through this and let's let's uh, write this in uh, what we know. So ultimately, again, we're, we're trying to find that molality. Now our moles of solvent, again, we said, hey, if we have a 100 gram sample and it's 36% by mass of HCl, that means we have 36 grams of HCl. Now, we need to find the number of moles, which means we need the molar mass of HCl. And so I'm gonna write this right above here. The molar mass of HCl is 36.46 grams per mole. And we can solve for our moles of HCl. So we have this. Remember, 36.46 grams per one mole. So we put 36.46 grams per one mole, and we plug that into our calculator. Again, we have 36 divided by 36.46. We press enter. Now, we had two significant digits here. We can keep two significant digits here. So this would round to 0.99 moles of HCl. Okay, now our kilogram, our kilograms of solvent. Again, solvent is water. We're not given that in kilograms. We're given it in grams. So we're gonna have to do a conversion. We're gonna need to divide that 64 by 1,000. And that would get us our kilograms. So all we're doing in the calculator is we're gonna take 
64 divided by 1,000, and we get a value of 0 0.064. So 0 0.064 kilograms of our water or our solvent. So now we can plug this back into our equation. Our molality in this case is going to equal 0.99 moles of HCl, all divided by our kilograms of our solvent, which is 0.064 kilograms of H2O. We then, in our calculator, put in 0.99 divided by 0.064. We press enter. Now, we only had two significant digits, so this rounds down, even though we have this on our calculator, two significant digits, this rounds down to 15 molal of HCl. So a 36% by mass solution of HCl converts over to 15 molal of HCl. All right, we've done a lot so far. We're gonna keep moving here. We're gonna go through another term associated with our solutions. And that term is known as the mole fraction. So the mole fraction is defined as the ratio of the number of moles of one component of a mixture to the total moles of all components. So mole fraction also has a formula to go along with this definition. So the formula here is a big X of, I'm gonna call this a component of the mixture, all right? So any component, any anything involved in that mixture is equal to the moles, the moles of that component all divided by the total moles of all components in the mixture. Now, another important thing to note here is that mole fractions range from zero to one. And usually those mole fractions are a decimal somewhere in between the, that zero and one. So let's go back to that, that real similar problem that we were talking about just a little bit ago. And we wanna know ultimately what is the mole fraction of an aqueous solution that contains 36% HCl or hydrochloric acid by mass? Well, remember this, okay? The, the total the total mass, if we assume we have a 100 gram sample, is going to be 100 grams of this solution. Now, if we have 36% of 100 grams, that means that we have 36 grams of HCl. And so if we do the subtraction here again, that means we have 64 grams of H2O. Well, now what we can do here is we can go in and we can solve for moles of each of these components, okay? Because ultimately we're gonna need moles of both H2O and HCl. So what we need to do here is this. We need to take our 36 grams of HCl and we need to convert it to moles of HCl. So remember, grams would cancel on bottom and we could get moles of HCl on top. Now, remember here, HCl, we had this in the other problem, HCl has a molar mass of 36.46 grams per mole. So that 36 number goes on bottom, so we have 36.46 grams per one mole, and we calculate out to see how many moles of HCl we have. So again, we have 36 divided by 36.46. We press enter. Again, we only had two significant digits, so this is going to round to 0 0.99 moles, 0 0.99 moles 
of HCl. Now we're not quite done. We gotta convert our H2O from grams to moles. So again, we start out with 64 grams of H2O times our conversion fracture, which we cancel out H2O or grams of H2O. We end up with moles of H2O. And as a reminder here, the molar mass of water is 18.02 grams per one mole. So that 18.02 number, 18.02 goes on bottom, one goes on top, and we calculate away. So we take 64 divided by 18.02, we press enter. Um, again, we had two significant digits, so this can actually round to 3.6, okay? So we have 3.6 moles of H2O. Now, to find the mole fraction, I didn't specify what mole fraction we're finding, so we actually need to find both if it doesn't specify. So we have the mole fraction of HCl is equal to the moles, moles of HCl, which is 0 0.99 moles of HCl divided by the total number of moles. So it's 0.99 moles plus the number of moles contributed by H2O, which is 3.6. So what we do here in our calculators, we type in 0.99 divided by, make sure you put the set of parentheses, 0.99 plus 3.6, press enter. We round to two significant digits, so this rounds to 0 0.22. And remember, this is unitless. So the mole fraction of HCl is just 0 0.22. There is no units because that units of moles canceled out. Now we do the same exact thing for water. So we have the mole fraction, the big X for water. We put the moles of H2O, which was 3.6 moles H2O on top, we divide it by the total number of moles, which is 0.99 moles plus 3.6 moles. We go through this process again. So we have 3.6 divided by 0.99 plus 3.6. Now make sure you put those parentheses around. We round to two significant digits. So the mole fraction of water here would be 0 0.78. And lucky here, if you add those two numbers together, you get the exact whole number of one. All right, so another term accomplished, another term that we've went over of how to do a calculation. And now we can move to a, another important thing here with solutions, and that is the concept known as dilution. Okay, so dilution is something that occurs when a solution in a concentrated form, or what we call a stock solution, is mixed with a solvent to a, obtain a solution of lower solute concentration. So again, this is another thing that has a formula associated with this definition. So the formula is this. It is M1 times V1, which is equivalent to your M2 times your V2. Now, the M1 is your initial concentration. Your V1 is your initial volume of that concentration. Your M2 is your final concentration after dilution and your V2 is your final volume after the dilution. All right, so let's put this formula to the test here in our example problem. We wanna know how many milliliters of 3.0 molar sulfuric acid are needed to make 450 milliliters of 0 0.10 molar sulfuric acid. So again, we use the same formula that we have up above here, which is M1, times V1 equals M2 times V2. And we list out our variables here and 
we go through this particular process of what we know and don't know. So our initial molarity is our concentrated solution. So this is gonna be one of the higher molarities here or the higher concentration, which is 3.0 molar. Our volume here, it says, hey, how many milliliters of that really concentrated stuff do you need? So this is our question mark. And then our molarity here, what we wanna dilute it down to is 0 0.10 molar sulfuric acid. And then the volume, we want the final volume to be a total of 450 milliliters. So we have 450 ml. Now, a uh, couple things to point out. The solution concentration just needs to be in the same unit. So it doesn't have to be molarity, often it is, but it just has to be in the same unit. Same thing with the volume. Again, no specified unit, but these two units here have to be the same, and I'll point that out here in a second. So we go through this and we plug these back into our problem. So we have three molar times our uh, V1, which we don't know, that's our variable, equals the final concentration, which is 0 0.10 molar times the final volume. So we get 450 mLs. Now to solve for V or get V1 by itself, you just divide both sides by that three molar. So in our calculators, what we need to do is this. We need to take 0.1 times 450 divided by 3.0. All right, so now we had uh, two significant uh, digits, and that's nice because our answer has exactly two digits there. So our volume here becomes 15 milliliters of that 3.0 molar H2SO4 is needed. All right, so another term accomplished, another term gone over. Uh, we have one more set of terms here plus a few more examples uh, to, to get through. All right, so moving on here, I'm gonna throw uh, three terms at you and we're gonna use a couple of them to go through our examples here. Uh, so mass percentage, we, we've actually already worked that with that um, HCL mass percentage problem. So you have an idea here, but the mass percentage is expressed as the mass of a component and a mass of the component per the total mass of the solution. And again, this has a formula to go along with this definition. So the formula here is this, the mass percent I'm just going to use the percent sign of a component in that mixture is equal to the mass of the component. And I'm going to label that as comp divided by the total mass. And you multiply that by 100 because it is a percent. So we move down to parts per million. Parts per million is expressed as the number of milligrams, mg, of solute per kilogram of solution. And again, parts per million has a formula to go along with this definition. So parts per million of one component, and I'm just gonna call this PPM, is equal to the mass of the component. Okay, mass of the component. I'm just gonna abbreviate that as comp for component, divided by the total mass of the solution, all multiplied by 10 to the sixth power. That is that million power that we talk about, okay? So very similar here, parts per billion. This is expressed as the number of micrograms of solute per kilogram of solution. And once more, this has a formula to go along with the definition. So the formula here, I'm just gonna say PPB for parts per billion of some component is the mass, mass of the component 
divided by the total mass. Oops, spelled total wrong. Total mass times times 10 to the ninth power. So times 10 to the ninth power is that billion component there. Now, with both of parts per million and parts per billion formulas, how we have the formula set up, it shows the mass and the mass needs to be in the same unit. So you may want to make a note there that the mass uh, needs to be in the same unit. All right, let's try a couple examples here with these uh, definitions I just went over. Okay, so it says a solution is made by dissolving 13.5 grams of glucose in 0 0.11 kilograms of water. What is the mass percentage of solute in the solution? So mass percent, mass percent of glucose. So C6H12O6 is equal to the mass of glucose. The mass of glucose divided by the total mass of the solution multiplied, multiplied by 100. Okay, so the mass of glucose is given at 13.5 grams. So I'm gonna say mass of C6H12O6 is given at 13.5 grams. Now, the total mass, the total mass is going to be this. It is going to be the mass from glucose, which is 13.5 plus the mass of what it's dissolved in. So 0.1 kilograms, to speed things along here, 0.1 kilograms, this is equal to 100 grams. So I'm gonna say 100 grams as our solvent. So the total mass of the solution is 113.5 grams. So we plug this back into our formula. So this equals here our mass of glucose, so 13.5 grams of C6H12O6, all divided by our total mass, which is 113.5 grams of our total mass. We multiply that by 100. So in our calculators, what we're going to do here is we're going to take 13.5 divided by 113.5 and we multiply that by 100, and we round to three significant digits. So this rounds to 11.9% by mass of glucose, or that C6H12O6. All right, so now we get to this problem here, parts per million. We have a two and a half gram sample of water. It contains 5.4 milligrams, or excuse me, that's micrograms. That's micrograms of our zinc two plus ion. We want to know what is the concentration of zinc two plus uh, ions in parts per million. Well, if you remember, parts per million is going to be the mass, a mass of the component that we're interested in. So I'm just going to say mass of component divided by total mass total mass, all multiplied by 10 to the sixth power. So the mass of the component, the mass of the component is 5.4 micrograms, okay? Now, our mass or our total mass is going to be that two and a half gram sample because within that two and a half gram sample, contains that 5.4 micrograms of those zinc 2 plus ions. Now, we run into a little bit of a problem here. See how our total mass is in grams and our mass of our component or our mass of our zinc 2 plus ions is in micrograms? We have to get these in the same unit. So the easiest way to do that 
is just convert micrograms to grams. So there is one times 10 to the six micrograms per one gram. So when you perform that in your calculator, we get 5.4 divided by one times 10 to the six. And let's not put all those zeros, let's put it in scientific notation. That becomes 5.4 times 10 to the negative six grams. So we have 5.4 times 10 to the negative six grams. And we plug this in. So this is parts per million of zinc two plus. Mass of the component, we just went through this calculation is 5.4 times 10 to the negative six grams of zinc two plus, all divided by the total mass, which we put two and a half grams of that because in that two and a half grams contains that 5.4 micrograms. Then we need to multiply this by 10 to the six power. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put 5.4 5 times 10 to the negative six divided by 2.5. Then I put multiply by one times 10 to the six and I get a value here. We can actually take it out of scientific notation. I get a value here if I round to two significant digits of 2.2 ppm or parts per million of zinc two plus ions. So again, your ppm of zinc two plus is 2.2 parts per million of that zinc two plus. All right, we've done, we've done a lot. We're gonna have some examples that tie a ton together. So hold on to your seat here uh, because we're gonna go through these examples and we're gonna accomplish this particular section. So we'll move on here. These examples tie almost everything that we've done up to this point in this section. And then we throw in stoichiometry, which is kind of cool here uh, to be able to do. So we start out with this and we say, how many grams of calcium hydroxide are needed are needed to neutralize 25.0 milliliters of 0 0.100 molar nitric acid. So whenever you get to a problem like this, the first thing that you need to do is you need to write down a chemical equation. So we start out here with our reactants. We have calcium hydroxide, so COH2, which is aqueous, you could look that up, it's aqueous. It reacts with nitric acid, so HNO3, which is also aqueous. Now, when they react together, the calcium nitrate becomes an aqueous component here. And, whoop, to write the formula down, right? Uh, and, we also get H and OH to combine together to form the neutralization, the water of that acid and base reacting. Now to balance that, to balance this problem out here, you need to put a two in front of the nitric acid and a two in front of the H2O. All right, um, so the first thing that we need to convert or we need to think about is, hey, we're only given 25 milliliters of 0 0.11, or excuse me, 0 0.100 molar HCl. Well, think about our, think about our formula here for molarity. It is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Well, hey, we are given our molarity. So I'm just gonna replace this with 0.1 zero zero molar HNO3 and we don't know how many moles that is but what we do have what we do have here is this we have the number of milliliters of solution now again we need to divide that by a thousand so 25 divided by a thousand gives us a 0 0.025 liters of solution 
so 0 0.025 liters of solution okay so what we do here we, we cross multiply so all we do is we take 0 0.025 times 0 0.0 or 0 0.100 we press enter what this means here when we did this cross multiplication it's really nice we get 0 0.0025 moles of HNO3 hey now that makes it really easy to do that that stoichiometry conversion things we have done in the, the past so our next component our next portion of this problem is taking this 0 0.0025 moles of HNO3 and converting it to the number of grams of calcium hydroxide. So what we need to do first, we need to, to convert over of moles HNO3 and we can't go straight from moles HNO3 to grams calcium hydroxide. We first got to go to moles of calcium hydroxide. Okay. Now, mole to mole ratio, where we find these values here, is from our balanced chemical equation. So the coefficient in front of nitric acid is 2, so we put a 2 out in front. Now the coefficient of calcium hydroxide, there's none, so we can assume that is a 1. Now we're not in grams yet, so we need to go through another conversion. And we need to go from moles of calcium hydroxide, so they'll cancel out on bottom, to grams of calcium hydroxide. So grams calcium hydroxide can finally be on top. And to help us out here, calcium hydroxide has a molar mass of 74.10 grams per mole. So that 74.10 number is associated with grams. So it goes on 74.10 grams per one mole. So what we do here is we take everything on top. So 0 0.0025 times one times 74.10, press enter. We divide that by everything on bottom, which is just two times one. And we get a value of point 0926 and some change. Now we're going to round this to uh, uh, three significant digits because we started the problem out with three significant digits. So this would round to our final answer would be 0 0.0926 grams of calcium hydroxide needed needed to neutralize 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar nitric acid. So we've, we've tied together stoichiometry right here, plus we've tied together our bits and portions of, in this case, molarity of our particular uh, items we've just learned. All right, let's go over one more uh, stoichiometry type of problem, um, and that will conclude this lesson here. All right, so we got a lot going on here. We have a sample of 70.5 milligrams of uh, potassium phosphate added to 15.0 mill milliliters of 0 0.050 molar silver nitrate. Ultimately, when you mix these together in formation, a precipitate um, occurs. We want to know what is the limiting reactant and the theoretical yield of the precipitate. So again, key thing here, key thing always is start out with your chemical reaction. So we have aqueous potassium phosphate. It reacts with silver nitrate, so AgNO3. And what happens here is this. The potassium and nitrate react together, so we get KNO3. Remember, anything with a nitrate, it's going to be aqueous. So that means silver and phosphate react together. And when they form a compound, it's going to be Ag3PO4. And this right here is going to be our precipitate. Now, to help us out throughout this problem, there's going to be two molar masses that you need. 
And before I give you the molar masses, we need to balance this. So to balance this problem, you put a three in front of silver nitrate, and you put a three in front of potassium nitrate. Now you can check that, but it is balanced like that. And back to our molar masses. We're gonna need the molar mass of potassium phosphate which is 212.27 grams per mole, okay? Then, you're also gonna need the molar mass of silver phosphate. So we have 418.58 grams per mole of silver phosphate. Now, our limiting reactant, remember we just convert both of our reactants to the same product. So we're gonna start out here with the 70.5 milligrams of potassium phosphate. The first thing I need to get rid of is this milligrams. So all I'm gonna do first here is I'm just going to get rid of my uh, milligrams. So I'm gonna go and convert this or divide that by 1000 milligrams to get in grams. And that, if we do that in our calculator here, 70.5, I divide it by 1,000, we get 0 .0705, 0 0.0705 grams of potassium phosphate, okay? So uh, what we're going to do from here, we're gonna use 0 0.0705 grams of potassium phosphate, so 0 0.0705 grams of potassium phosphate and we are ultimately going to convert it to that precipitate which means solid so we're going to convert it to grams of ag3po4 so what we're going to do here is we are going to set up the conversion which means we're going to cancel out grams of k3po4 and we first have to go to moles of k3po4 Four. Gram to mole, we use the molar mass. This 212 number is associated with grams. So we go 212.27 on bottom to every one mole. Now we gotta go mole to mole. So on bottom, we cancel out moles of K3PO4. We're trying to get to grams of AG3PO4 but we first gotta go to moles of AG3PO4. What we do here is we use the balanced chemical equations or the coefficients to be able to put our mole to mole ratio. So in front, K3PO4, where we have a value of one. In AG3PO4, we have a value of one. Now we're not quite done because we need to convert our moles of AG3PO4 to our uh, grams. So we put grams on top finally, and now we can use, now we can use that molar mass of AG3PO4. So this 418.58 grams per one mole. All right, that's a lot. And now we can go through our calculation here. So I'm gonna do, is multiply everything on top, which is 0 0.0705 times one times one times 418.58. Then I divide everything on bottom. So I divide by 212.27 times one times one again. And I press enter. And right now I get a value of 0 0.139 grams of AG3PO4. So again, I get uh, this equals 0 0.139 grams of AG3PO4. Now that's just one possible answer here. We have to convert now 15 milliliters of 0 0.05 molar silver nitrate to our same substance here. So what we're going to do first is remember, we have 0 0.050 molar AgNO3. 
Well, remember the definition of molarity is moles of solute. So in this case, it's gonna be moles of AgNO3 all divided by our liters of solution. Now, 15 milliliters converted to liters. You just take 15, divide it by 1,000, and we get 0 0.015 liters. So we get 0 0.015 liters. All I need to do to find the number of moles of AgNO3 is take my 0 0.015 and I cross multiply this. So I take point, uh, or this multiplied by 0 0.050 and press enter. So I get right here 0 0.00075 moles of AgNO3. Now, what I need to do is I need to go through a conversion and I use my starting substance of 0 0.00075 moles AgNO3 and I start my conversion. So now I need to cancel out moles of AgNO3 on bottom, okay? And I would like to get to grams of Ag3PO4, but I first have to convert to moles of Ag3 PO4. Again, your coefficients become our values whenever you have mole to moles. So we have three associated with AgNO3. The coefficient out in front of Ag3PO4 is one. Now I do the same conversion I did up here to get two grams. So I'm going to go from moles of Ag3PO4 to grams of Ag3. AG3PO4. So again, 418.58 is the number of grams per one mole. So to get our value here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 0 0.00075 times 1 times 418.58. I press enter. I divide it by everything multiplied together on bottom, so three times one, and I press enter. Rounding to three significant digits, I get a value of 0 0.105 grams, grams of Ag3PO4. Now I do this, all right? That was a lot of work. All I need to do is I need to compare these two numbers and I need to say, okay, which one of these two numbers, 0.139 or 0.105, is smaller? Well, 0.105 is smaller. So what that means, the starting substance here is the limiting reactant. So in this case here, our AgNO3 is our limiting reactant, our LR. And the theoretical yield of the precipitate, the solid that is produced, is the smaller of those numbers. So our uh, theoretical yield of our Ag3PO4 is equal to 0.105 grams of Ag3PO4. All right, so I know that's a, a lot of information here. This was a big, big, big problem, all right? Take your time on these problems. Me going through this and explaining it took almost 10 minutes. So take your time. Make sure you have enough space to cancel out all your units and go through this particular procedure. Uh, but the big key component is using your formulas and canceling out units. All right, this has been uh, quite the episode of uh, Science with Serbac. We went through a lot, uh, as always. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed, and make sure if you haven't, subscribe.